Ignite your curiosity with Austin next. We're watching Austin transform from a thriving ecosystem into a global superstar. With our host, Jason Scharf, we aspire to better comprehend the true nature of innovation. Together, we will uncover what makes a successful ecosystem and navigate the technologies shaping our future. Now let's dive into what's next. Today's podcast is sponsored by Austin Private Wealth, a registered investment advisor focused on fee-only financial planning and investment management. Their mission is to serve affluent clients with personalized financial advice, fostering a trusted relationship that will endure for generations to come. Austin Private Wealth is not just about managing wealth. They're about inspiring you to embrace a future filled with possibilities and helping you architect enduring legacies. Their core values of integrity, service, caring, excellence, and growth are at the heart of everything they do. Connect with them today at austinprivatewealth.com. Austin Private Wealth is a registered investment advisor. Advisory services are only offered to clients or prospective clients where Austin Private Wealth and its representatives are properly licensed or exempt from licensure. No advice may be rendered by Austin Private Wealth unless a client service agreement is in place. Investing involves risk and possible loss of principal capital. Please seek advice from a licensed professional. Austin is adapting to and building the future in real time. I'm Michael Scharf. We are exploring and driving our transformation into the next innovation powerhouse. I'm Jason Scharf. I'm a bio-researcher at UT to the assembly line worker at Tesla, from the musician on 6th Street to the coder at Dell. And with the founders, funders, and early employees of the next great startup, we are all Austin Next. We see all of these best of city lists being published. Best places to live, most affordable, tech job growth. How does Austin stack up when looking at our overall startup environment? Today, we bring on Farshad Rahimi, who is going to walk us through Startup Genome's annual ranking of the global ecosystem. We discuss the big observations in this year's report. What does the data say about Austin? And how does our future look? Dr. Fahimi is the Director of Data Strategy for Startup Genome and holds his degree in artificial intelligence, electronics, and robotics. He's now using global tech startup data to identify gaps in startup ecosystems and scale up programs. He's currently an advisor to data driven companies and becoming greener and AI powered. Most recently, Dr. Rahimi served as co founder and CTO of Solra and worked closely with General Atlantic and Newcom Group to build a full analytic solution on their recent portfolio company. He's published patents on energy efficiency and failure prediction in advanced manufacturing. Dr. Rahimi started his first venture and managed his fund in UK horse betting markets using principles of AI and high-frequency trading. Arshad, welcome to the Austin Next podcast. Thank you. Excited to be here. All right, let's start off the big picture here. Tell us about Startup Genome, what's the mission, and what is the research you guys are conducting? The Startup Genome, we built the 10 years of research across the startup economy. And what we are planning to do here is we want to democratize the startup tech economy, enable everybody across the world to grow their ecosystems based on their culture and innovation that they have. And that is what we are doing here. No, I like it. And I think one of the things that we always talk about is, you know, Austin having its own special sauce. And I think that having the innovation ecosystems of each individual geography kind of based on their culture and their secret sauce is kind of a great thing to be looking at. So exactly. So today we're here, we're just releasing the uh, 2022 Global Startup Ecosystem Report. So I want to start before we get into the, what the report says, can you talk a little bit about the methodology? What's the data that you're looking at? How are you measuring it? Yes. The methodology is created based on five main factors. So those are performance, funding, a startup experience, knowledge, and legacy. As you know, also in Austin, with more companies, big companies moving to Austin, legacy is becoming very important. This is the base of a startup economy because that's where the knowledge is also shared in terms of what is the old knowledge and how it is being transferred through the collaborations to the startups, to the new startups. Knowledge is something we are measuring mainly based on the patents and innovation research that is done inside the startup ecosystem. And it's very important for universities, for example, for laboratories to work with the startups in order to build new and innovative startups that are not only having global missions, but also it applies to the local um, requirements. We measure a startup experience because it is showing 
the experience of the investors inside the ecosystem. It's important for the investors, for example, to work with the startups in order to help them grow into more successful startups. And obviously the performance and funding are the major factors inside an ecosystem. Performance is very much linked to the size of the ecosystem, how it is growing in terms of the number of exits and also in terms of the count of exits. So in this year's report, what are the biggest observations you've seen globally? This is, I think, one of the most interesting reports we released. And you're basically at the 10-year anniversary of our report. So this is showing what happened in the past 10 years and how we see this startup economy growing in the next 10 years. Obviously, we had some forecasts also the 10 years ago. We are reflecting on those. And what we also want to talk about, it seems like how the share of early stage and later stage funding change. It's important to see, for example, the investors have shifted focus uh, recently to, to the later stage and why. There's been an inflation in the valuation of rounds in the US and Europe. We talk about that. We've seen a growing number of unicorns, for example, in ecosystems in India. So India has been rising the last year. And we've seen the reverse effect almost in China. So eight out of 13 ecosystems in China that we're evaluating has been dropping in the ranking. And also what we see is a tremendous number of in, a global increase in the number of unicorns. So now we have 113 ecosystems globally. What are the biggest observations you've seen globally? This is, I think, one of the most interesting reports we released. And you're basically at the 10 year anniversary of our report. So this is showing what happened in the past 10 years and how we see this startup economy growing in the next 10 years. Obviously, we had some forecasts also the 10 years ago. We are reflecting on those. And what we also want to talk about, it seems like how the share of early stage and later stage funding change is important to see, for example, the investors have shifted focus uh, recently to, to the later stage and why. There's been an inflation in the valuation of rounds in the US and Europe. We talk about that. We've seen a growing number of unicorns, for example, in ecosystems in India. So India has been rising the last year. And we've seen the reverse effect almost in China. So eight out of 13 ecosystems in China that we're evaluating has been dropping in the ranking. And also what we see is a tremendous number of in, a global increase in the number of unicorns. So now we have 113 ecosystems globally that have at least one unicorn. And as you look at the moment now, like with the stock market kind of in the way it's situated with inflation up, do you see this dispersion increasing? Do you see the late stage valuation staying up? Or I know kind of in the immediate, we've, talked, we've heard a lot about kind of valuation starting to go down, but seed stage maintaining. How do you see these kind of observations maintaining? Is it a one-year thing or say multi-year effect? I think uh, there's been a lot of speculation about what's going to happen next. You know, in the last year, we've seen the valuation of companies have been a cross going up, especially in Europe and US. We've seen that. And uh, I one of the speculations we have is that in the next year, this is going to slow down, especially because investors are going to hold on to some of the dry powder that they had. But we have to see, things can change. Okay, all of us are asked to be prognosticators at one time or another, whether you're inside a company, that's strategic planning, whether you're a consultant, or like yourself, you're an analyst. So let's talk about what your prognostications were 10 years ago and how good you've been. Yes, we've seen a dispersion of a number of unicorns and also ecosystem value across globally. As I said, 113 ecosystems have now had unicorns in the past year. And we are evaluating now around 280 ecosystems globally that wow. are now started hops. So that, that has been growing tremendously. That's great. Let's take a dive into Austin. 
where do we rank this year? How does that compare to our previous rankings? And what's driving our movement up or down the rank? Austin has been doing great. Past year, it was number 20. And this year, it is 25. Uh, the main reason is that Austin, in comparison to the peers that have gone up, is now holding a, a quite big size in terms of the ecosystem value. Now, since last evaluation of the Austin, the ecosystem value has grown to 119%. So it's around 43 billion in terms of ecosystem size. This means that the larger Austin gets, it is harder for it to grow, need some exits and Recently, we've seen the growth of exits also in Austin from 12 to 14. Since last GSER, it had six exits over 50 million, and that is a growth for Austin. But the peers are also growing fast, so it has to catch up. Okay, so that's one of the hard things that we saw where, where both Jason and I used to live in San Diego, was that when companies exited, they not only exited financially, but they exited San Diego. Do you see that same kind of thing happening when a company exits here in Austin? Do they leave the city or are they staying around? I think the observation is correct in a way that we see uh, ecosystems such as San Diego, Berlin, Sydney, that are hubs going up in terms of exits. And Austin is staying almost in the same place. But I think this could be shifting because also we are seeing this and legacy, big legacy companies moving inside Austin that are able to acquire these startups that are scaling. So let's look at, at the comparison in North America. How have we been doing with regard to Silicon Valley or Boston or New York or LA? In terms of comparison to Boston and LA, what you see is that it's important to say Austin has been growing 47% in terms of a number of exits, so it's been doing great. When it comes to total funding, total VC investment, uh, if you track Boston, uh, Austin in comparison to Boston, LA, and Silicon Valley, what you see is if you put them on a race on a map from 2012, Austin is catching up with all of these big ecosystems. In terms of total amount of funding, Still, it's around 20% of Boston. So that it needs to catch up. But again, when we are looking at the ranking, because you asked me in the previous question, one of the reasons that Austin is falling back five ranks is because there's been a lot of funding going inside Austin. And it needs to turn those funding into larger scale ups and exits. So that is the main reason. There's this oscillation in the sort of ecosystem that the ecosystems grow, and then they have to turn those funding amounts into exits. Absolutely. One of the questions I have is in looking at the different phases of fundings here in Austin, we've seen a whole bunch of startup money going into Austin companies. Obviously, those companies won't be exits for five, six, seven years, maybe more. How does that compare in terms of startup funding between Austin and other areas? When you look at the earliest stage funding in Austin, if you look at 2012, it had around 172 million in terms of funding. Now we are seeing in one year in 2021, 835 million. So what is that around four times, five times the earliest stage funding in 2012? It's uh, still relatively small in comparison to Boston, 20% of Boston, but it's a head start, which means that we have to turn those early stage funding into a scale-ups, successful scale-ups. So if I was going to put my prognostication hat on, then I'd say if we've grown 5x in terms of early stage funding, then six, eight years from now, I'm hoping we grow 5x in terms of exits. Exactly. That is what we're seeing in other ecosystems. So besides translating these, you know, fundings into exits, what are the biggest gaps that we also need to change in terms to move up the rankings? You know, when it's a, a startup ecosystem is receiving so much funding, 
and it's been growing four times, five times its size only in the past year. What is needed is the mentorships and also founders networking inside the ecosystem, helping each other in order to help the startups scale up and turn them into globally leading companies. So that is what we are seeing also in terms of legacy companies being there, in terms of universities helping the startups. As long as the, the fact that we're starting to attract now those, uh, those headquarters at the Tesla and Oracles of the world creates a whole different structure and infrastructure behind um, what can make these companies go both from a talent perspective and from a knowledge perspective. Yes, exactly. This is one of the things with the scale-ups and also legacy companies helping the founders, collaborating to make new innovations and help them grow up the company. One of the biggest things that we've observed as being kind of a powerful strength of Austin is our sector diversity. You don't just see, it's not just consumer internet, it's life science, it's crypto, it's manufacturing, it's uh, cybersecurity. How do you see that data playing out? I'm glad you asked. Boston, Austin, comparison to the other ecosystems that are major ecosystems, it's relatively good in subsectors such as AI and BD, but then it's also good in things such as cybersecurity, which is not so strong in other ecosystems usually, and also as strong in clean tech. The combination of the subsectors together with the legacy companies can create also successful advanced manufacturing. And this is the sector diversity. You also mentioned, I think we had a short conversation before the interview. You mentioned the prop tech company and I looked into it. I think these are also innovative companies that can shift the, the startup landscape inside Austin. It's one of the interesting things that we noticed is that kind of you said that you have these big waves coming. I mean, I remember if you go back to our early podcast, we talked a lot about um, Samsung is possibly opening up another manufacturing plant, and that was kind of almost an every uh, an every week conversation. And then they announced that, and then now every week it's a different semiconductor uh, manufacturing company coming. And I think it's interesting you said the same thing with the crop tech. You know, we saw uh, Setpoint just announced six hundred million dollars plus, but that was after. Homeward last year raised 300 million. And again, it just starts to be that kind of wonderful